Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and iOS 18.0.1 has been out for a couple weeks and there's definitely some more things to talk about with that. And iOS 18.1 beta 7 or public beta 4 has been out for a few days and has more features to talk about as well. We'll talk about not only the features, but talk about the overall experience. Since many of you have given me feedback on the YouTube community poll, at the time of this video there's over 25,000 votes and 322 comments. Stick around toward the end and we'll read some of those comments to see what you had to say. Now, as far as new features, well, we're all waiting for Apple intelligence. It's launching with some new features, but the new Siri and chat GPT integration will not be included with the first release. According to recent code found by Mac rumors, Apple is preparing to implement chat GPT support very soon. We don't know the exact release date of all the features, but the next iOS 18.2 update could include Genmoji, image playground, and maybe even chat GPT, or at least some sort of instance of that. So we could try it out. So maybe we'll see that in a few weeks after iOS 18.1 launches. Apple card actually is getting some new updates as far as summaries with Apple intelligence. Many didn't expect this and notification summaries work very well with text messages and emails and appear to carry across to the Apple wallet as well. So it will summarize different things you've purchased and more. So that's a great update. Many of us didn't expect. Also something else that's new is if you live in the UK, Apple has added roadside assistance via satellite to your iPhone. So it's now supported in the UK. If you're in a specified area, you need some help. You can actually check roadside assistance and request help for your vehicle. So that's something that's getting added very soon, if not already. And if you need help, it should be there. Also something else new has to do with Apple music where it gets an update for artists. They can actually now create playlists based on concert set lists. So Apple actually announced this on their promote your shows with set lists. And you'll see different information here where you can upload your artist image, connect your artist page to ban bands in town and create your set list. So this is something new that's come to Apple music and we should start seeing that soon as artists update it. As far as new features, well, one thing I already mentioned earlier this week is Apple is finally going to redesign the mail app. They expanded tools to businesses, and this explains why maybe it was delayed a little bit. So we're going to have that new mail update where we have different icons and businesses can add those. They can add their icon to Apple tap to pay as well, along with their icon next year to the phone. So all of those things are coming very soon, but again, they're not part of iOS yet, but the next update, hopefully iOS 18.2 includes those. Something else that's new in iOS 18.1 beta seven is the first time you set up Siri, it actually has a new screen. Someone posted this on Reddit. And so now it's actually walking you through a multicolor screen where it says something such as, Hey Siri, how's the weather? And then you actually say that, and sorry if I just triggered all of your phones, but you'll see, you can go through this and see some of the differences here where it walks you through, you can send a message and much more. The overall setup screen is a little bit different. So that's something that's new as well. And when you use Siri to play a playlist, now the new interface can actually so show suggestions. So play my favorites playlist from Apple music. So within this same interface, again, you can see what this looks like. Siri can actually suggest some different things that it will play maybe next as far as other playlists. I haven't seen it myself, but let me know if you're seeing that show up as well. Now, as far as releases this past week, well, Apple released a new AirPods Pro 2 beta firmware update. However, no one has seen the new hearing aid option just yet. It's updated to version 7B5013D. However, some people are just seeing 7B513D. However, that's the latest update. I don't currently have it enabled on my AirPods Pro 2, but if you do have it enabled, you can see that by connecting them to your iPhone. So let's wait for them to connect here. Once you go into your menu, scroll to the bottom and you can see the actual version you have. The latest public version is 7A305. So we could see this very soon, maybe with the next version of iOS 18.1, maybe we'll finally see the hearing aid support. But either way, I can't wait to try it out. And I think it's going to be very useful for those that need it, especially since it's much less expensive than getting professional hearing aids. Now this week, Apple surprised us the other day and released vision OS 2.1 beta six, and that was released by itself. They didn't release anything else. And we're also wondering if we're going to get iOS 18.0.2. Now, seeing that iOS 18.1 is probably a couple weeks away, it's possible we could get that in between since there's definitely a few issues with iOS 18.0.1 that seem to creep up after the first week we'll talk about in just a moment.
but iOS 18.0.2 might show up this week, but I'm thinking probably 18.1 will have the same fixes and we'll just have to wait a couple weeks. I would expect iOS 18.1 RC as soon as this coming Monday on the 21st. And according to Mark Gurman, we could see the public release on the 28th. Since we had different releases all throughout the week this week with the new iPad mini announcement that launches with iOS 18 or iPad OS 18. So that doesn't even get 18.0.1. So it's hard to say what they're going to release. Maybe they're just really pushing to get iOS 18.1 done so that they can introduce to Apple intelligence. Finally, that's something that we could probably see on the 28th. Like I said, but we could expect other announcements this following week as well. Also, iOS 18.2 is set to include a bunch of different things, so we'll probably see those betas maybe shortly after that or the following week. Either way, I would expect a couple more betas until probably mid-December. That's typically when Apple takes time off, and then they'll sort of take the last two to three weeks of December off into January. So that's what I'm expecting so far. But as far as the overall iOS updates, well, iOS 17.7 still seems to be the most stable version. Many people are downgrading. So if they want to use that, maybe they're on an iPhone 15 or older, you can't downgrade on the 16 pro or any of the 16 models. But if you have an iPhone 15 model, you can downgrade to it. Many people have actually said it's very stable. This is because iOS 18.0.1 seems to have more and more bugs. Last week, many of you said it was very reliable, seemed very stable, and also seemed to be very good with battery. After the first week, this seems to have deteriorated quite a bit, and many people are reporting on it. Mac Rumors has actually reported on many different issues, such as app crashes or just touch responsiveness issues or overall problems together with it freezing. So that's definitely an issue on 18.0.1 for some people. Thankfully, I haven't seen that. I haven't had my family complain about that, but many people have. One thing my daughter did complain about is mail not working properly. And I've seen this throughout different comments as well. Mail apparently is not working for some or fetching mail. And also there's still touchscreen issues, even after iOS 18.0.1, which was supposed to fix that. Also, I'm having issues with airdrop on iOS 18.0.1 and beta seven. Sometimes it will send and stop halfway through and I'll have to do it a few times. And many are saying that AirPods are now disconnecting. So maybe you're using AirPods, you're listening to music and then they disconnect. Also, some people are saying CarPlay just won't work for them. Thankfully, I haven't seen that myself. It works in my car just fine, but quite a few people have said that it just won't work. It won't enable, they can't use it, and there's nothing they can do with it. So let me know if you're having that issue, and I would love to know which car you have, or maybe stereo that you installed, maybe that is causing the issue, or maybe it's something on both ends where they both need an update. As far as iOS 18.1 beta seven or public beta four, they're the same thing. There's an odd bug that's actually returned. The wallpaper dimming bug is here, but it seems to be in reverse. This time when you bring in maybe your notifications or something else, such as your lock screen, swipe home, it actually brightens or saturates the actual home screen more before it used to desaturate. Now it seems like it saturates more. So I don't think that's a bad thing, but it's kind of odd that it flipped the other way. Also, I've actually had a random respring on my phone. I opened a link someone sent and it respring the phone. This was actually from a trusted source and just going into a YouTube link instead of opening YouTube crash the phone from my brother. So this is definitely an odd thing. There's some issues throughout and I've seen this from other people as well. However, the number one issue with iOS 18.0.1 is battery life. Now iPhone 16 is now getting worse battery life for many people. It launched with great battery life, but now many are complaining the battery life has become much worse, even when doing nothing. Last week, many of you, like I said, reported very good battery, but now it's been out a couple weeks and it seems like it's getting much worse. Just doing nothing, it could drop maybe 60% and you're barely using it. So this is definitely an issue for a lot of people. So some odd things going on here, and that's why I said maybe we could see an 18.0.2. Apple's aware of it, it seems, since it's all over Mac rumors and other websites. So hopefully they resolve those very soon. But initially it was quite good. This actually had me thinking of a time when they were introducing APFS as far as the file system. They said later on that they actually in the background loaded the file system and then deleted it just to see if it would work and sort of gave themselves a status update. Well, no one knew that 
that was taking place. It makes me wonder if they're doing something like that with Apple intelligence, maybe installing something we don't know about, and maybe it's just using a ton of power. Now let's go ahead and take a look at battery life first from a viewer that actually sent in their iOS 18.0.1 battery life on an iPhone 16 pro max with hundred percent battery health. Thanks to Cameron for sending that in. And you'll see yesterday he had two hours and 48 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 40 minutes of screen idle time and used about 50% of his battery. The day before that he had four hours and 22 minutes of screen active time and used almost about 70% of his battery. So it's actually been getting worse for him. He said typically he would get about eight to 10 hours. Now it's down to about six hours or so. So it seems like it's getting worse. Like I reported before and many others are reporting as far as iOS 18.1 beta seven. Well, it's been pretty good for me. If we go down to battery here or go up to battery, you'll see if we go into battery health, I have 100% battery health at 24 cycles. If we take a look at the last 10 days, Today I had two hours and 46 minutes of screen active time, five hours and 56 minutes of screen idle time, and I'm down to 49%. Yesterday, three hours and 57 minutes, three hours and 34 minutes idle time and use 75%. And while that's not very good, it's actually getting me through the day using this so far. So you'll see some of these are still using background activity. So I need to turn off background app refresh entirely, and that will hopefully fix that. I have it on for a couple different apps, such as the car key apps and things like that. But in general, it seems to be something that's using a lot more power when it comes to the overall performance. Well, in general, iOS 18.1 beta seven is quite good. However, there's lots of freezing with 18.0.1 on the iPhone 16 models. Now too, there's some stutters. However, face ID seems to be faster on the latest beta. So let's try it on both of these phones. We'll open it up here and it seems to be about the same. Try it again seems like it unlocks at the same speed. So I'm not seeing that maybe some others are, but there are some stutters for sure on the iPhone 16 models, keyboard issues, and much more. When it comes to the overall heat of the device, they're staying nice and cool for me, but those that are having poor battery life are now reporting that they're getting quite warm. Let's take a look with the thermal camera. So on iOS 18.1 beta seven on the 16 pro max, we're right about 30.2 degrees Celsius. And then on the 16 pro max with 18.0.1, we're right about 28.4 degrees Celsius was the hottest I saw. So in general, both are staying fairly cool. I'm not doing anything intensive on them really, but in general, they seem to be okay that way. The only time I've had them get really hot is when I was actually recording video outside for a long time and it warmed up a little bit enough to pull the screen down, but it wasn't hot to the touch, but that's the only time I've ever seen that on the 16 pro max. When it comes to overall benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at that. I ran that before the video. Now from left to right, we have iOS 18.0.1 on the 16 pro max on the iPhone 11, iOS 18.1 public beta four. And on the iPhone 16 pro max, we have iOS 18.1 beta seven. You'll see in general, the iPhone 16 pro maxes are within the margin of error. They're pretty good, but 18.0.1 has a higher single core score where it actually has a lower multi-core score. In fact, I scored a little bit higher yesterday when I ran this with multi-core as well, 8,544 is the best I've seen, but single core I think is the best on 18.0.1. But either way, this should just give you a general idea of what to expect. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.0.1, well, for the security updates, I probably would. However, if you're on iOS 17.7, .7, I would probably stick with that until iOS 18.1 is out. As far as iOS 18.1 beta seven or public beta four, if you haven't installed the betas yet, I'd probably hold out as we expect the RC or release candidate probably as soon as Monday, like I said earlier. So based off of that, I would say just hold out until that version. If you haven't installed it already, as far as the overall experience, let's see what you had to say in the comments. The Baron 080 said iPhone 16 pro max since 18.0.1, I'm having constant shutdowns in all apps. YouTube, solitaire, safari photos, about three a day. Love the phone, but excited for 18.1. Blind Gordy said, I'm on iOS 18.0.1 on my iPhone 15 Pro and things are going well. Battery life is exemplary and battery health is still at 100% with 146 cycles, despite me being a heavy user. Shorky Dog Mom Coffee Lover said, I'm on iOS 18.0.1 and using iPhone 14 Pro. I was having battery issues until I went and turned off app refresh in the background. 
Now everything is fine. Before then, I would wake up with full battery, and by mid-morning, I was at 3%. Now I can go all day without having to charge until I go to bed, and just charge to make sure it's charged for the next day. Kishin Mandalia 7222 said, Even iPadOS 18.0.1 has touch issues. It doesn't register sometimes. Herman in Ilema says, I'm on iOS 18.1 Beta 7. It seems like a stable package. Battery is overall being fine since downloading this version. Ghostface 202 said, 18.1 beta 7 fixed all the battery issues on my 15 pro max very stable at the moment this seems to be unprecedented as far as apple we have two major issues with the iphone having battery issues and freezing and lockup issues now and also we have apple executives moving throughout the company changing positions leaving or retiring so apple's definitely making some changes what they are and how they'll benefit the company we don't really know but it's surprising at this point that with ios 18.0.1 it was supposed to fix issues but now it's gotten much worse after a week. Initially it was much better, but now it seems to be an issue. So we definitely have a problem and hopefully they fix this very, very soon with some recent updates. Now, if you're having issues, make sure you submit them in the feedback app as Apple finally updated this. So under recent activity, we of course have iOS and iPadOS 18.1 beta seven check here for any issues you may be having. And if they're not listed here, be sure to submit feedback. In fact, I've heard back from some people that they're aware of issues that were fixed in this beta. So they fixed some issues as far as freezing and other issues, but they're still working on them for the public. So again, we don't know if they're waiting to maybe update to iOS 18.1 or going to push 18.0.2 to get that out faster. So that's everything with iOS 18.1 beta seven, iOS 18.0.1 and iOS 18.0.1. 0.1 RC is just around the corner. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>